fishes feed 5,000 people with 12 baskets of leftovers. Generally, there's only a few leftovers that I eat. Pizza, macaroni and cheese, and of course, anything that is possibly a dessert. <laughs> but because lef leftovers are most likely to become science experiments in our refrigerator. They are rarely my first choice when, you know, you open the door and you're like, mm, what can I eat? It's never going to be a leftover. And yet, I'm learning to love leftovers. This gospel and my experience last week in Houston are definitely changing my mind about leftovers. Five loaves, two fishes, feeds 5,000 with 12 baskets of leftovers. After a day of teaching, Jesus blesses the bread and fish. Jesus invites thousands of people who would not normally eat together to do just that. I'm guessing they might have found that a bit unsettling. And that's how you know it's actually God's work, when it feels a bit unsettling. Jesus calls forth in these moments a new generation a new kingdom. And a child leads the action. The multiplication of loaves and fishes is found in each of our Gospels. And it's the same general story. Lots and lots of people come to see Jesus, to hear him teach. And after a while, somebody realizes that people are hungry, that they need to be fed. And there is little food around to do that. In John's gospel, a boy, a child, arrives with some bread and a couple of fish. Jesus thanks God for this offering and then turns it loose. And the return is so much greater than the start. Yes, it's an old familiar story and we hear it every year and I think we hear it every year because we need to hear it every year we need to see the abundance that is God the abundance that feeds all our wants and it is always more than we can imagine also for those of us who love a good formula that's me actually it's a simple one Give God thanks first. That's it. We just recognize the source of our gratitude. It's simple, but not very easy, right? In fact, it can be the hardest when we feel strangled or worried, anxious and unsure that there is not going to be enough. It was tough on the disciples faced with feeding a multitude, and it's harder still for us. Our economy and principles of economics are generally based on a different set of expectations than is found in the feeding of the multitudes. Unfortunately, scarcity is what drives most human economies. Not many leftovers there. I, I'm no expert in economics, but I have been blessed to witness God's law of abundance. Twelve went to Houston with five loaves and two fish, and they came back with twelve baskets. Many of us think we do not have what it takes to participate in this kind of kingdom building that Jesus calls us to. We are too something. Right? We are too busy. We are too young, we are too old, we are too unskilled, too unqualified, too limited in some capacity or another to do much. We don't really have enough. We aren't really enough. That's just not the case, beloved. Every year, from one gospel or another, we hear the feeding of the 5,000. And we are reminded that Jesus works miracles on our behalf for sure, and we, with God, work miracles in the world. Five loaves, two fishes, 5,000 fed. 
It's not even been one year since Harvey struck the coast of Texas. And it is religious groups and youth groups in particular that now make up 90% of the recovery and relief work going on in and around Houston. Thanks be to God for them. Thanks be to God for the people who have de directed their energy and time and resources toward this recovery effort. Thanks be to God for those who organize the skills and materials and people to bring hope and healing. Our eight youth led us by sharing what they had themselves. The food, the bread, was them. It's a very different kind of Eucharist, but a Eucharist in every sense, offering all they are and all they have in thanksgiving to God. Sharing Christ, simply, honestly, completely. This is the kingdom of God, an unsettling force, a new generation. Eight teenagers with the aid of four mostly capable adults, maybe three and a quarter capable adults, tore out and replaced three ceilings in four days. It was hard work. Twelve people met dozens of strangers and within days had new friends. It had its challenges. Yet, it changed lives. We all were enriched by their sharing. This miracle happens all the time. Where kindness is sown, kindness is grown. Where love is shown, love grows. Where food is shared, there is more than enough. When hearts are broken in compassion, they are enlarged for service. A little becomes a whole lot more when it is first offered to God. In sharing who we are and what we have, we are enough. It is enough. And the leftovers, beloved, are more than enough. This week, I saw us breaking through cultural differences, poverty, oppressive heat, mosquitoes, fire ants. We pushed through fatigue, frustration, and maybe even a little homesickness, and we experienced abundance. Our leftovers look like new ceilings and a cleaner house, wheelchair ready. It looked like new friendship, new skills, new awareness, and greater gratitude for our lives. What will God's leftovers be like for us? Us, as we say, all y'all, people. Yes, we struggle. We often think there is not enough to go around. So I ask, what could we learn from our missioners? Before we left, we prayed with them. We gave thanks to God for who they are. Because remember, none were carpenters, none were remodelers, none were trained in the trades. Sure, some had a little mission experience to draw upon, but few had seen the devastating effects of a natural disaster and poverty. We went with some bread and fish, and we received 12 baskets full of leftovers. That's how God's economy of abundance works. I saw it. So I've changed my thinking a little about leftovers. I see more clearly that leftovers are the abundance of God's love, of God's grace and mercy. Leftovers in God's kingdom, economy, equal more than what we start with. Let us pray. God of abundant blessing and generosity to match, 
Your vision is not restricted to the available resources, and your purposes extend far beyond our limited vision. While we worry about retaining what we have, those who have very little yield their all, and thousands are enriched. Teach us the economics of kingdom living, a shirt-sharing, extra-mile-walking, have-my-lunch way of life. For then many shall be the richer, and we shall be among them. Amen. <laughs>